Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we have got Mr. Nightmare video and this is three horrifying true gaming horror stories. And we don't get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button, and subscribe button, comment what you think down below. Let's go. This video topic is gaming horror stories, and this video is appropriately sponsored by Opera GX. I spent a lot Is Opera GX a computer? I don't know what Opera GX is, but I don't want to listen to that, so I have no Story 1 by James. I live in Chandler, Arizona. This happened when I was like 17 and in my heavy gaming phase, still living with my parents. I played a lot of Call of Duty in my room on my computer in those days, especially in the summertime when it's so unbearably hot outside and I prefer to stay inside in the air conditioning anyway. Back when I lived at home, I'd have the place to myself a lot because my parents travel a lot and I was the last one to move out. If I recall correctly, this was on a Friday night, or a night that school was out the next day because I was staying up late. After I got home from school, I submitted a paper that was due that night to get it over with. Then I had to do some shopping afterwards on my mom's orders since they'd be gone for a while. It was how I earned my keep in the house, according to my dad. They left cash for me to use. I always had to show them the receipt though so that I wouldn't just pocket any of the money. My mom gave me a shopping list, so I went to Whole Foods in my old Camry, my first car. Shopping took about an hour door to door. While in the grocery store, this guy online behind me started talking to me, and I don't know why. He made a comment about one of the things I was buying and just wouldn't stop. Even as I was bagging my groceries, he kept talking to me, which I found weird. He wasn't paying attention to anyone else. I was still nice though. When it was time to leave, I said have a good one and left. I went out to my car in the parking lot and packed the trunk, then headed home. It was a scorching hot day, as we were in early June. I wasn't looking to go out and do anything outside once I was done with everything I needed to do. It was dark out by now, so I got right on Call of Duty Black Ops on my computer and texted my friend Johnny to get on as well. He joined my party, and we played some team deathmatch as we always did. I was using my noise-canceling Logitech headset. We were committed already to playing Call of Duty all night and ranking up. So of course, I needed to take a break to make dinner at some point. Probably two hours into playing, I told Johnny I was going to eat dinner and I'd probably be back on in an hour. He said he'd be back on later too. So with that, I took a break and made some pasta for dinner. The kitchen is downstairs and my room is upstairs. While I was sitting in the kitchen eating, I knew for sure I heard a thump from upstairs. Did it sound like a footstep? I wasn't sure. It could have been any number of things but the last thing I'd imagine it would be, would be a footstep. I did, however, go and lock the front door now. Oftentimes for a while, I would leave the door unlocked just because my parents' house is in a good side of town, and I just never took the idea of a- No matter how safe your place is, does, or what neighborhood is, there can be danger. If you no matter where you live, lock your doors, lock your windows, always. Break in seriously. It's something you hear about on the news, but don't think it'll ever happen to you. I went upstairs, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I said my brother Tristan's name into the hallway. I knew he wasn't supposed to be here, but I don't know. I heard a sound, and I felt the urge to see if anyone was here. When no one answered back, I went back to my room and got back on Call of Duty. I put my headset back on and texted Johnny that I'm going back on. Shortly after he came back on, we started playing Team Deathmatch again. A couple games in... I looked to my left at the doorway of my room into the hallway. I don't know if something in my peripheral vision or some other sense felt something there, but I would leave the door open when I was home alone as my mom would tell me to. The hallway was dark except for the one little nightlight plugged into an outlet. My room shone blue for my wall lights. Some of the blue poured into the part of the hallway closest to my room. In between the crack of the door was total blackness. I couldn't see through it. I didn't think anything of it. After our next game, Johnny said he was taking a leak and walked away while we were in the lobby. I looked at my phone, then looked back out to the hallway, and I noticed something was different. Now I could see through the crack of the door into the hallway. My first thought was, was someone blocking it just minutes ago? By instinct, I spun my chair around to face the bed behind me, and there was a man sitting on my bed, with his freakishly upright posture and his hands resting on his thighs. He almost looked to be smiling. 
I was so alarmed, I jumped out of my seat onto the desk and crawled onto the desk. Bro! Bro, I'm telling that's either how someone murders me, or that's all how I murder someone. Someone's dying in that scenario. Because I'm... Bro, I'm freaking... I'd be losing my fucking mind if I looked at my bed and there was just a random human I don't know sitting there. All hell is about to break fucking loose up in there. Either they be killing me or I'm gonna kill them or at least beat the shit out of them or they're gonna beat the shit out of me. Some violence is about to break loose. Causing my monitor and basically everything else to fall off of it. I screamed, what do you want? And he started to actually smile now, showing his teeth like he was laughing. I ran out of the room into the hallway. I stopped halfway down the hallway and looked back at my bedroom door. I heard the springs of my bed lifting, and then the guy slowly walked into the doorway and stopped. He stood there. I once again yelled, what do you want? He then spoke in a stuttered, slow voice, asking if he could play too. I asked, how did you get in here? He stepped a few steps forward and pointed down the stairs. I assume he was implying he entered through the front door. I was at a loss for what to do, so I ran down the stairs to the landline phone as my cell phone was still in my room. I grabbed the phone and a kitchen knife and screamed, you need to leave, I'm calling 911. I heard footsteps walking down the steps, and the last time I saw the guy was when he walked past the kitchen, looked at me, and then I heard him walking out the front door. I ran to slam it shut and lock it. For the first time ever, I was ashamed at myself for leaving the door completely unlocked. I held the phone for a few minutes, deciding whether to tell my parents. Ultimately, I did. My mom was concerned at first, then grew livid, so much so to the point that she put my dad on the phone. He told me to go through the house and make sure nothing was taken. I went through every room, and honestly everything seemed in place. I said the man seemed like something was off about him, and my dad said, yeah, no shit. The man didn't seem... Man, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's like, there's, there's God broke into a place and then he was just watching me play. He was like, yeah, there's something off about him. I'm like, yeah, no fucking shit, there's something off about him. <laughs> I must be saying to a 17 year yeah, no fucking shit there, Sherlock. There's something wrong with him. Yeah, no shit. I'm overtly hostile, but something was wrong with him, and I don't know what his intention was. The image of him sitting on my bed, and the realization that he was watching me through the crack in the door, is haunting enough. So I'm going to assume this is the guy who was talking to him at the store. Right? They have to be connected in some way. That, that's who that is. They never said it, so I'm just putting two and two together here. This is a story I'm not proud of, mostly for my naivety. When I was in middle school and early high school, I didn't know how to talk to girls at all at school, but that's a lot of boys in middle school. I wasn't shy in general. I had friends and did normal things an 8th grader would do. I just had never kissed a girl or anything. Some of my friends at the time claimed they've already gone further than that with girls, and I was starting to feel pressure. But I was still having trouble approaching girls in that way. The mentality went from boys making fun of girls to... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay, let me, let me break some news for you, okay? Relationship today, talking to chicks. I'm not good at talking to chicks either. I'm horrible at it. Fucking horrible. Fucking horrible. Been considered dry when talking to people. Basic as fuck. When I'm at my ele when I usually meet women I'm with, I end up dating. I always meet them in the most bizarrest, oddest of circumstances. Never normal. It is never a normal thing. Never a normal situation. I never meet someone on a dating site. I don't meet people in a thing. I always meet people in those bizarrest of circumstances. I don't think there's ever been a girl I've met normally that I've dated. It's just always those weirdest areas. It's just... I don't know. It's just the way it is. Suddenly liking them in a matter of like a year. I was a pretty big gamer in middle school and early high school. This was when I was in 8th grade. I was like 13. My voice was still probably a bit prepubescent sounding. It was 2010. I played a lot of console games and computer MMORPG games. My favorite console games at the time were GTA 4 and Call of I want to get a computer, gaming computer, but I just can't freaking do it at the moment, so. Duty. My favorite computer game was this MMORPG called Gunzu. 
It was this online game where you would level up by killing monsters, and the more you leveled up, the higher level monsters and hunting grounds you'd be able to tackle. The online community in this game was very active, and there were tons of players. My older brother used to play it a little bit too. I played it more for sure though. I was in a guild and town and everything. I don't remember how it happened, but I befriended this female player who was a higher level than me. Her username was Medusa. Anytime I'd sign in and she was on, she'd message me, and vice versa. We would join parties together, which meant we'd share EXP on whatever monsters we killed, and we'd just chat for hours. She knew a lot about me, including my age, my town, and some personal family details. She would open up to me, too. Eventually, she told me her name was Tari- I already can tell where this is going. I can already tell where this is going. 100% can tell where this is going. This is a guy pretending to be a female. Gonna assert, that's usually the most way these goes. Risa. It was weird feeling such a connection with a girl who really you knew nothing about her appearance or her voice. It truly was like having a pen pal but better. It was interesting enough that we both lived in New York State. She lived about an hour from me. After a few weeks or maybe even a month, we started talking about maybe meeting one day. To do this though, we'd have to exchange numbers. At the time, I didn't actually have a cell phone yet. I only had an iPod Touch. But I was able to download some texting app that allowed me to send messages to people with cell phones. Through this app, I was able to send her a picture of myself. It was definitely this cringy 8th grade boy selfie of me trying to look good looking. She called me cute and then she sent back a picture of herself. She looked a couple years older than me, like 15, which was the age she told me she was. Based on the picture, I found her very attractive. This was around the time our messages became more flirtatious and romantic. But we were both minors, and so of course neither of us could just go drive an hour away. However, she apparently had a solution for this. She told me her sister had friends that lived around me anyway, and she could probably get a ride to me. This was exciting news for my little... There's always some sketchiness to this. Y'all need to be careful when you meet people, especially when you meet them online. And if they don't talk or they don't speak or anything, always be cautious. 13-year-old self. I wanted to wait for a day and night that my parents wouldn't be home and I'd have the house to myself, which was about a week later, I believe. My parents were going to the ham- That is a bad idea also. Since for the whole weekend, so it would just be my brother and I home. My brother was 18, so I asked him to please just go out for the night with friends so that I could be alone with Teresa. I gave Teresa my address and told her to come that Saturday whenever she wanted. She said she'd be coming a little later, like at night. She didn't give me an exact time. At that point in time, we still had never spoken on the phone. I still hadn't heard her voice. I was so nervous all day that I couldn't even play video games. I was busy cleaning my room, making things look cool, fixing my appearance, even rehearsing things to say in the initial moments of meeting. Then I got a message from Teresa, saying she's here. I sprang up and ran to the front door. I looked through the peephole and didn't see anyone. She then said you can come out to the front door. I opened the door and stepped onto the front porch. I looked around, and the street was dark and quiet. No cars, no people. I went back inside and shut the door. I messaged her back, saying I don't see you. She said back, oh, I must have the wrong house. Give me a minute. That was a bit weird. I locked the door and sat on the living room couch, nervously waiting, playing games on my iPod. I got a message from her again. She said she's here and to come outside. I replied, ring the bell so I know you're at the right house. Then the doorbell rang. My nerves really set in now. I walked to the door, looked through the peephole, and didn't see anyone. I said, Teresa, through the door. Through the peephole, I saw a hand reach towards the door and knock. I said, Teresa, again, as I kept looking through the peephole. Everything felt like it instantly crumbled down on top of me, as this bald, creepy-looking short guy stepped in front of the peephole, and then said through the door, Hey, Joey, it's Medusa from Gunzu. I want to talk. I ran away from the door with my hands over my mouth, truly speechless. The person I'd been talking to all this time was a creepy, grown man, yeah, I knew where I was going immediately. There was never a doubt in my mind of what was going on there. It's always a... Yep. A hundred percent. That's why you gotta be cautious with shit like this, man. You gotta be cautious. I was disgusted and scared. 
I went to call my brother's cell phone. He didn't pick up. The doorbell kept ringing. I went to my bedroom and locked myself in. I held the house phone in my grasp, considering calling my parents, but too embarrassed to do so. My room was the only other room in the house with the lights on. I have a big window in my room that overlooks the whole side yard of our corner house. I turned off my lamp and slightly kinked the blind just a crack, and I saw that guy on the other side trying to look in. He started to knock on the window and started saying through the closed window how much of a connection we clearly have and that we can at least be friends. I responded nothing. I called my brother again and he picked up this time. I said please come home right now. The Teresa person was a grown man the entire time and he's at my window right now. My brother's always been pretty big, even as a teenager. I'd feel safer with him being here. He said he was coming home with his friends right now. We stayed on the phone so I could tell him if anything happened. I ran to my parents' bedroom upstairs and hid there. The man was blowing up my message app, saying he would like to talk and there's a reason he had to lie about who he was. When my brother got home, he told me he sees the guy outside. My brother and his three friends confronted the creepy short man outside, so I went outside now to watch. The four of them intimidated the man, calling him a sick fuck and such. And the man's defense was that he was concerned for my well-being, inviting strangers from online over, and that this... Oh, that is amazing. The guy had the gall to be like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm here because I'm concerned for him. Because, see, he's talking to a random stranger online who's pretending to be a woman. He's the one you should be concerned about, not me. This fucking guy has the gall. He has no shame. The guy has no shame. This was supposed to be a learning lesson. I refuted this claim by asking him why he would say that we could be good friends at my window. When my brother and his friends started pushing the man, he started quickly walking to his car. My brother kicked the guy's taillight while one of his friends threw a rock at his window. He sped off down the road to never be seen again. This was humiliating and disturbing, but at the same time, I was really grateful of my brother and his friends to come to my aid. They potentially saved me from a seriously sick creep breaking into the house. It's still painful and uncomfortable, realizing all that time I spent opening up to who I thought was a girl my own age on a game with some creepy grown man with a different agenda. Yep. Please be careful on who you talk to online. You never know who actually is on the other side of that computer. This happened last week. Just a bit of background information. I had just officially quit playing Fortnite. Not that it's important, but this was May 2021. So Fortnite had already had a lot of people quitting the game. My friend Brandon suggested that I download Apex Legends and play with him. I had already had the game downloaded, so I just updated it to the current version. So I logged on, and I remembered how bad I was at this game. I hadn't played since the game came out, so my stats were awful, and I had only the starting legends. I mains Pathfinder and Bloodhound because I just thought that they were the two best starters. Something else to note, I have a very loud gaming headset, so I could barely hear any background noise. But to get to the actual story, it happened when I was home alone. My parents had gone out for their week late anniversary dinner, and my brother was at his friend's house. I was playing Apex with Brandon, when he suddenly got a text from a random number. He said, dude, what the fuck, I just got a random message. What does it say? I asked. I remember exactly how it went. He said, look out the window. Don't look out the window, dude. There's nothing there, I replied. No, he says. Look out your window. What? Why? I said, as I turned my head slightly to the right, then to the left. I didn't know which window to look out of, since this room has five windows. I looked at each of them in a panic, and I found it. The one that was least visible from my couch. There was this man just standing there. I was clueless. I didn't think much of it, because the dude was facing away from the window. Little did I know just yet. I put my headphones back on. Brandon just got another text. He told me, Luke, I'm not messing with you. Dude, there's someone outside your window. I know, I told him. I just saw him. He's just looking the other way. What? He asked. He just took a picture of you at the window looking clueless. What the fuck? I said. I suggest you call the cops and get him out of there, he tells me. Then, strangely, he stopped talking, and there was that sound of an Xbox notification. He left the party. 
He never does that without saying bye or that he's going to bed. And I saw he was still in Apex playing in a match. What the fuck? I muttered to myself again. Eventually I got a party invitation from Brandon and asked what happened. Next thing I know, there was a deeper voice than Brandon's on the mic. I remember in every little detail what it said. Come outside right now or I will come in. I couldn't recognize the voice at all, but I knew the voice was that of a grown man. I looked back at the window and sure enough, there he was banging on the window. He looked completely demented. His face was a dark red with his hands gushing blood. As he pounded on the window, it started to crack. I picked up my phone, which was right next to me. I was horrified to see it was at 1%, basically out of battery. I kept saying, oh shit, over and over. I put my phone to my ear and mouthed the words, there's a man trying to break into my house. His face is dark red and his hands are bleeding. Next thing I know, he starts screaming while bashing at my window. Then I thought, wait a second, there's screen sheets in front of all of our windows. So how, if he never cut it, was he already at the glass? I took too much time to think. Finally, a shard of glass falls to the ground. A hole large enough for me to shout through opens up. I screamed, go away before the cops get here, you son of a bitch. I used too much breath on those words. Another shard falls, then another. I went to get a large knife from the knife block we have in the kitchen, and I returned to where the man was breaking the window. There was already a hole big enough for him to crawl through, and he had already started. I ran back to the kitchen and grabbed the cordless phone, ran upstairs and dialed 911. I told them the exact words that I mouthed on my cell phone earlier, along with the fact that he was now inside my home. Unfortunately, the only doors with locks upstairs are the bathrooms. So, thinking on my feet, I went into my parents' room, into that bathroom, and locked the door. At that moment, I was thinking I was being smart because I left the bedroom door wide open, and the bathroom door that's actually inside the bedroom is not visible from the bedroom door. I thought if that guy managed to come upstairs before the cops got here, he would see the door wide open and think I wasn't in here. Suddenly, I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My heart started pounding harder than ever, and it got harder to breathe. I opened one of the drawers looking for something sharp that I could maybe use as a weapon, and I think he must have heard the drawer, because he came stomping into the bedroom. I heard sirens outside, and I never could have thanked the cops enough for being so fast. He heard it too, and at this point he had nowhere to go. I heard him run outside, but he was too late. The police were out front already. I ran outside to the police as well, and I told them what happened. The man was arrested, handcuffs put around his bloodied wrists. I later figured out that I had killed that guy in Apex and kind of shit-talked him just an hour or two before. Somehow he got my address and Brandon's phone number. Some people are just- Wait, what? Hold on. And was arrested, handcuffs put around his bloodied wrists. I later figured out that I had killed that guy in Apex and kind of shit-talked him just an hour or two before. This guy did all of it because you killed him in Apex Legends? What? My man, not a man who takes per games way too personal. It's like he plays a game and if anyone actually kills him in the game, he kills them in real life. That is fucking insanity. Somehow he got my address and Brandon's phone number. Some people are just fucked up in the head, and apparently they will do unspeakable things for video games. Everyone gets frustrated for getting killed in a game. That, uh, that should be a fucking horror movie. That should be some type of horror movie. But really, showing up at a person's house to potentially kill them, in real life, over a game, is really messed up. This guy had to be mental. A few police cars stayed at my house overnight after the others had taken the man away. The man was convicted for aggravated burglary. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.